Good happy Saturday evening, April 6, 2019. I'm Riley King and welcome to Entertainment News with Riley King. Let's begin. First up, SNHU Arena sells out concerts, but monarchs struggle with attendance. Management at SNHU Arena bragged this week about six sellout concerts in recent months and gearing a high ranking among similar sized arena for concert ticket sales. Meanwhile, the Manchester Monarchs hockey team that plays at the arena ranks next to the bottom in league attendance as it hits the finish line for the regular season this weekend. The team in January announced it was up for sale after less than three years in the hands of its current owners. And this week, the team confirmed it was talking with potential buyers. Cheek through a spokesman initially agreed to an interview with the New Hampshire Union leader, but later canceled it. He also declined to answer written questions submitted, including whether the Monarchs would play next season in Manchester. The Monarchs average 4,622 4, fans per game during their first year in the E C H L in twenty fifteen to twenty sixteen. Cheek and his ownership group bought the team in twenty sixteen. Through Thursday the team averaged two thousand four hundred and nine per game this season, about two thousand less than the league average of 4,398 and 48% fewer than during the last season before the current owners bought the Monarchs. The Monarchs win part of the higher Slurb American Hockey League drew the league best 4,141 fans per game during the 2003-04 season. Jeff Innsberg, who praised over that success as the team's president from 2002-2010, now owns a Manchester advertising agency. Polestar ranked SNHU Arena as the third highest in ticket sales among U.S. arenas with fewer than 15,000 seats during the November to January quarter, but those numbers excluded arena sports tenants. Sold out concerts include Dave Matthews Band, Chris Young, and Panic at the Disco. Bert declined to discuss the Monarch's sale. In his statement, Cheek said, We're grateful for the support of our loyal base and community partners, and we are looking forward to this weekend as we finish the regular season on home ice and sure a spot for a long playoff run. Mike Skilt, President and CEO of Greater Manchester Chamber of Commerce said the team has been active through the Chamber organization. And we'll have to see what happens next season. Avengers help unveil major donations for seriously ill children. Let's take a look at this video. Clogged for us? Not like the other questions. 
Pure. Pre or porous. You can't even see it. You can see it. Acne? I use Pure. Pure. Pre or porous. Will snuck some Taylor Swift into the show. No, you're just behind that, right? It's, it's time now for the skinny. And Taylor Swift's endgame had nothing awesome. on another endgame that sent seismic shocks across the internet. Yeah, pre-sale tickets finally went on sale for Avengers Endgame. And now our own world is now Avenger World. Gans to tell us about the record-setting sales. This is just the beginning for Endgame. Oh, get ready. Buckle up. From here on out, it's going to be Avengers Mania until the movie premieres. I'm so excited. I know y'all are too. Captain America, Iron Man, and the Super Squad aren't just breaking records this morning. They're breaking the internet. Where's the Avengers? We gotta finish this. A marvelous day for Avengers Endgame. The Hulk and his pals smashing pre-sale box office records. Lights, camera, bar stools, Jeff Lowe explaining how the Avengers continue to crush their competition. It's been 10 years, 20 plus movies. It's almost unthinkable. But for fans, all that ticket-buying traffic was the kryptonite for a super moviegoer's experience. We owe this to everyone who's not in this room to try. AMC's website and ticketing app appearing to crash because of the high demand. AMC tweeting, it looks like we've gotten Thanos' snap. We're working on getting things back up and running. And where did that bring you? Back to me. Meanwhile, one fan making light of the situation with this Infinity War-inspired joke about his ticket buying attempts. Fandango placing buyers in a virtual line, at times longer than an hour. Why all the hype for this film in particular? It's all about those prequels. It's movies that meant a lot, culturally. They're just bringing in so many different things that we've never seen something like this, and that's what makes it so special. It's not about how much we lost. It's about how much we have left. So it's no marvel that there are opening day 2.30 a.m. screenings of Endgame that are already sold out. And with a three-hour runtime, that means those people aren't getting out of the theater until 5.30 a.m. The sun will be coming up. Jeff says, though, next time tickets go on sale, a lot of times AMC and Fandango will release tickets like 15 minutes earlier than they said they would, oh. which is a good way to sneak in and get yours before the internet blows up. Okay, so this is not a movie premiere. It is an event yes. for the ages. It's a culturally significant moment, and I am so looking forward to it. You really don't want to miss out. I think I and might And you should on. just watch all 20 other Marvel movies to get ready <laughs> for this that, been, that we've seen over the past 10 years. Is that what you're going to do? I'm not gonna do that. I'm not. Even though I we reported on a contest that was happening where they're paying someone to pay oh, you to, to you know, to sit there and watch 20 Marvel movies in a weekend. Um, what I will say is that now this is a big event. The ticket sales are gonna be. I mean, we heard what a billion dollars possibly it could be in a opening worldwide weekend. opening box office weekend of a billion. I'm not gonna see That's this movie crazy. until a month from now. Yeah, pretty much. Just the theaters are so packed. If you want me to go to the opening night premiere and report back to you guys, okay, I guess okay, I can okay. do it. It's decided. It's decided. <laughs> we actually want to send you out to the lines and have That's you wait what there. We want. <laughs> That's what we really. That's what That's people really their world is now. That's how we really want. work. Yeah. <laughs> and we will have you report from that line for us. All right, if I can dress up as Captain America while I do it, I'll do it. All right. Done. Done. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Thanks little well. thank you guys. Okay, and there you go. And also some of the Marvel Top Avengers have assembled to support a $5 million donation to benefit seriously ill children in hospitals around the globe. That is very nice and generous of them. Watch E.T.'s Caitlin Knight and Kevin Frazier face off against Hell's Kitchen chef Gordon Ramsay. Take a look at Need the a video. logo? If you're a doer like Olivia, check out Fiverr. Not a doer? Check out this gerbil eating a tiny burrito. Nah, you're a doer. If you're like me, then you like to get done. Okay, you won't believe this, everyone. So we came early to the restaurant to visit you to celebrate the big one year. There's already a line outside. Let's go out and meet your fans. Oh, no. 
enjoy lunch. Okay. Yes. If you're not happy with it, send it back. Okay. okay. One year anniversary. How does it feel? Vegas for me in many ways is almost like a second home. We have five businesses here now. It was a dream. We opened up the books with 30,000 reservations. I think it's one of the fourth or fifth highest grossing restaurants now in America. All bad as Gordon turned up the heat on Kelty and me, we faced off in our very own Hell's Kitchen on the Vegas Strip. You two, welcome to my world. Okay, it's a little hot back here. But yeah, well, the challenge, pan seared scallops in just three minutes. Are we ready? Ready. ready. Your three minutes. Start now. Okay, I'm ready for I need oil and no. Kelty, okay. oil first. Okay, look, oh, oh, for sorry. goodness <laughs> sake. Too much oil. My God. It's a non-stick pan. That's why it's called non-stick. Jeez. It's hot. 60 seconds gone. How many scallops you got in the pan? I got 60 seconds. Get one out. If you think that rattled me, you'd be right. Get in there. Yes, sir. on, please. Scallops getting cold. Oh, I got it. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's 45 seconds to go. Use a spoon, lady. Use a spoon. Of course it's hot. It's kitchen. You got your Jesus Christ. What's I wrong with you? Point. Three, two, one, stop. Bang! In the end, there could only be one winner. The most outstanding scallop dish, the, the one that we'd serve in a restaurant. Congratulations, Kevin. Oh, ho, ho! It's not you. Kel, congratulations. Well done. Kevin, take your apron off. Your time is done in Hell's Kitchen. Wow, very cool. And that's very cool. Hell's Kitchen, a new location in Vegas. Shams Review, Superhero Spoof to Stupid Tour. Let's take a listen to that view from Entertainment Tonight, Eyewitness News, sorry about that, ABC 7 Eyewitness News, Sandy Kenyon. Let's watch the review. And here is that review. In a genre that has seen an explosion of popularity in recent years, one superhero story has managed to stand out. The new movie Shazam takes a lighthearted look at a classic comic tale with actor Zachary Levi at the helm. Entertainer reporter Sandy Canyon is here now with his review. Sandy. Liz, hate to disappoint you, but there are some movies that are so bad, I risk boring you just by taking one or two minutes to tell you about them. As I sat there looking at my watch every few minutes, praying Shazam would soon be over, I was wondering if an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old boy could love this picture, and I came to the conclusion, nobody could. <laughs> Watching the trailer, you might think Shazam is cool, but instead it is really lame. An attempt to rip off the classic movie Big that starred Tom Hanks as a boy who becomes a man. How old are you? Basically 15. Before he learns how to get big, the hero is an orphan, which screams politically correct. Give these people a chance, because that's what they're giving you. For reasons too idiotic to explain here, the kid can transform himself into Zachary Levi simply by saying... As a spoof, it is stupid and it's too goofy to work as a superhero tale. I'd like to purchase some of your finest beer, please. Normally, I suffer through movies like this by latching on to some aspect of the picture I like. But what trade paper variety likes to call tech credits are substandard, and so are the not-so-special effects. Here. Levi is likable enough, but he gets blown off the screen every time Jaiman Unsu as a wizard and Mark Strong as the villain show up. Chosen one. Oh, you're like a bad guy, right? Strong is a real actor who uses projects like this to subsidize his exhilarating work on Broadway and elsewhere. His talent is wasted here, which is just one of the many reasons why you shouldn't waste your time watching Shazam. <laughs> Now, another critic called this movie refreshing and only a little bit cheesy. 
No, it's really cheesy and looks to poke fun at the genre in the same way Deadpool did. But Zachary Levi is no Ryan Reynolds and Shazam falls flat. You can always see my reviews on our website, abc7ny.com slash entertainment. Today, I reviewed Pet Cemetery, which I liked a lot better, oh. Diana Liz. Wow. Well, there. Oh. Wow and wow. And if you plan on going to see Shazam, let us know what you think of it. We want to hear from you as well. Well, and now let's take a look at your celebrity birthdays for today. And here is a look at those celebrity birthdays for today, and happy birthday to all of those celebrities for today. We hope they all have a wonderful birthday. And that is it for entertainment news with Riley King. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Be back here tomorrow night for another edition of Entertainment News with Riley King. Good night, everyone. Bye.